A very good day to all of you. This is the lecture on imaging of the maxillary antrum. I am Dr. Lahari Telam from the Department of Oral Medicine and Radiology, Penang International Dental College. The learning outcomes would be to list maxillary antrum disease, intrinsic maxillary disease, extrinsic maxillary antrum diseases, discuss differential diagnosis of uh, both of these type of uh, diseases. It is important to understand that the paranasal sinuses are a group of uh, air-filled or fluid-filled uh, cavities located in the bone, in the skull, and we have four pairs of uh, sinuses which are located on the uh, either side of the skull, namely the uh, maxillary sinus, which is the largest of them all, the frontal sinus, sphenoidal sinuses, and the ethmoidal sinuses. The, it is important to understand that the role of paranasal sinuses is to insulate or protect deeper vital structures from external trauma. The most important sinus of them all is the maxillary sinus. It is of greatest concern to the dentist because of this proximity of this sinus to the teeth and the supporting structures. So primarily we will be looking at the intrinsic and extrinsic diseases and the definition of this would be diseases associated with the maxillary sinus including those originating primarily from the tissues within the sinus are called as extrinsic diseases and those that originate outside the sinus which are commonly of odontogenic origin and either impinge or infiltrate into the sinus those are defined as extrinsic diseases. Looking at the examples of intrinsic maxillary sinus diseases, most commonest category would be inflammatory diseases which include mucositis, sinusitis, retention pseudosis, polyp, antrolith, mucosil, and a fungus ball. The neoplasms would be either benign, uh, most commonly papilloma or osteoma, and malignant, which is squamous cell carcinoma or a pseudotumor. Under the extrinsic maxillary diseases, we have again the inflammatory category with periostitis and periosteal new bone formation, uh, primarily due to uh, periapical inflammation uh, from uh, infected maxillary teeth. Uh, also, benign odontogenic cysts and neoplasms which grow into the maxillary sinus, bone uh, dysplasias, uh, for example, fibrous dysplasia, or hydrogenic effects of dental procedures on the maxillary sinus. The major methods of imaging of the paranasal sinus is a, a simple maxillary periapical view which can show you the floor of the maxillary antrum, a panoramic view which can show you a larger view of the maxillary sinus along with parts of the inferior, posterior and anterior medial walls. The floor of the maxillary sinus may not be viewed very clearly. Um, for which you might have to rely on better, more uh, uh, images with higher resolution and 3D imaging like CBCT and multi-detector CT scans, which help you evaluate the sinus diseases and extension of diseases, as well as uh, chronic or recurrent sinusitis. MRI can be used for soft tissue um, views or soft tissue extension of neoplasm into the sinus and differentiation of retained fluid secretions from soft tissue mass in the sinus. The range of normal uh, position of the maxillary sinus relative to the premolar and molar teeth is shown in these periapical images. Um, in <clears throat> observe images A to D, you will see that in image A, there is no apparent floor of the um, maxillary sinus and uh, you will see in B and uh, C that there is progressively more pneumatization of the alveolar um, process in B and C whereas in D you will see uh, draping of the maxillary sinus border over the apices of the teeth and is very very particularly evident in this case. This is the panoramic image which is showing you of a loculus of the left maxillary sinus draping of the roots, uh, mimicking a benign space occupying lesion. But in fact, it's just the uh, maxillary sinus which is appearing um, like a large cystic area here. The waters view, also called as paranasal sinus view, gives a very clear appearance of all the sinuses, especially the maxillary frontal sinuses. Um, and here you can see maxillary sinusitis by the uh, uh, air fluid level which is occupying the entire uh, maxillary sinus on the right side whereas the left side appears more clearer. 
this is example of again plane radiographs using a panoramic image to observe a mucus retention phenomenon uh, which is seen as a radio opaque soft tissue mass within the floor of the sinus and the image on the right shows you the uh, effect of odontogenic cysts in the maxillary on the maxillary sinus you can see that the floor of the maxillary sinus is pushed and the entire cystic uh, a cyst has occupied the entire maxillary sinus with also displacement of the impacted teeth within the cystic space. And you can see that the patient here is having a large swelling over the uh, cheekbone and specifically the maxillary uh, bone area with even involvement of the um, uh, nose. CT scan of the maxillary sinus. This is a coronal view of the maxillary sinuses of uh, picture uh, A which is showing you complete opacification of the left sinus and uh, circumferential mucosal thickening of the uh, right sinus. This is mucosal thickening of the uh, sinus space on the right side and left side is completely opacified. Picture B is a sagittal view of multi-detector CT scan which is showing you mucositis in, in the uh, ethmoidal uh, region or the ethmoidal air cells. <clears throat> um, again, uh, views of uh, uh, retention pseudocyst phenomenon, it can be very clearly viewed as a radiopaque soft tissue mass seen in a periapical radiograph or a maxillary sinus radiograph and this is also seen in a CBCT cropped uh, panoramic uh, generated panoramic image as well as in the on a CBCT um, axial image and coronal image as well. CBCT scans again can be used to visualize sinus pathology. This is an image just trying to show you the association of maxillary sinus pathology and healthy teeth. Uh, if you look onto the right side, these are roots uh, where are which are within the maxillary sinus and there is a pathology in the sinus. And a, a picture below this shows you roots which are outside the maxillary sinus and there is a pathology in the sinus. So you were able to make out healthy teeth and their relationship to the uh, pathology. On the other hand, uh, you are seeing a normal sinus floor where the roots are looking like they are protruding into the sinus floor, very close to the sinus floor. And uh, an image of healthy teeth and a healthy normal sinus where the roots are away from the sinus. So it all depends on the size of the sinus and the pneumatization. That means how much amount of air content is there within the sinus and whether there's a pathology in the sinus, which determines how close the teeth are to the sinus space. Let's look at this case where we can see two intraoral periapical radiographs. Um, the first one A is the image of a rarefying ostitis. Uh, we can see that there is radiolucency at the apex of the um, mesiobuccal root which is perhaps a small radical cyst and it's associated uh, uh, the, the tooth is showing you a large uh, radio opacity with arrow marks pointing towards the peripheral cortex of the large opacification which is impinging into the uh, sinus itself. Now the image of uh, B is showing you a pseudocyst on the other hand and you would notice that there is no peripheral cortex which indicates that there is a disease which is originating from uh, intrinsically within the sinus floor itself and the um, periapex of the uh, premolars and the molar are seem to be fine and the uh, inflammatory response is primarily within the sinus floor itself. This is also another case of extrinsic involvement of uh, the maxillary sinus by uh, fibrous dysplasia. The image A shows the left maxillary sinus with uh, rarification, I mean um, radio opacity mixed with radiolucency. And you can note that on the uh, right side, the sinus seems reasonably uh, well defined. Uh, the same case as seen on axial um, images of uh, multi-detector CT images, we can see that there's almost complete encroachment of the sinus on one side with a very small portion of the medial space which uh, pointed out by the arrow marks. And also um, it is noted that the radio opacification which is seen is homogeneous and uh, similar to the pattern of fibrous dysplasia. This is another case of slices from a CT scan, or a cone beam CT scan, which to which the arrow marks are pointing uh, towards air fluid level, which indicates sinusitis. Um, this is specifically the maxillary, right maxillary sinus, which is showing us uh, 
um, fluid levels indicating that that is the cause for sinusitis. So this brings me to the end of this chapter. As always, please go back and refer to the textbook for better understanding of the concept. And like I always tell you, with radiology, the more images you see, the better retention you have and the better you're able to correlate with the clinical case scenario.